In the 1960s, terror hits the streets of Northern California, known to be one of the most famous serial killers in the United States, and still to this day, the identity of this man remains unknown. I'm, of course, talking about the Zodiac Killer. I'm your host, Casey. I'm Mike. I'm Jagged Jaw Joe. I'm Matt. Yeah, I was just going to ask uh, what everyone knows about the Zodiac. I actually know well, quite I know, a bit. I'm a, I, oh, go ahead. I was no, just you gonna say, go, Joe. You go. <laughs> you, you already did it. Um, Fine, I go. know that is the sketch artist, uh, Jerem, like Bobby Hill. That's all I was going to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or kind of like Whoa. Chester from the Breaking the Habit music video. Oh, he kind of looks like. I know quite a bit about, about the I'm Zodiac. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Zodiac okay, killer just, just because I'm interested in serial killer stuff. I've listened to podcasts about him. I've watched two movies, dra- dramatic movies, plus other like documentary stuff about One him. One was a porno. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in case you guys didn't know, like the Zodiac, the one with uh, Robert Downey Jr., Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo, um, that's a remake. There's like one that came out like a long time ago. It's similar. It's about I was the, actually like, going to watch that before this, but it's a good movie. We, we bumped it up a bit, so I didn't get to do all my bonus yeah. extra shit that I so always he, do. I, I was, walks up on the unsuspecting victims and he's like, hey, what's your sign? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but well, dude, yeah, that, I got a I got for you. Gross. Stab. Like all, me and yeah. all my siblings, we, we are really into like that true crime and serial killer stuff. So it's like my sister, she has a couple books. One is called like the serial killer encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. And like, it has a bunch of them and how they were caught and shit like that. It's pretty cool. I might actually go grab it. See what's in there. There's another there. book. It's called oh, you should, that you Aquarius should read, like, a does not agree with my sign. Excerpt? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, cool. I got, Oh, Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Well, um, um, I don't know what I was going to say. Well, I could actually, while he goes and does that, I can say, I can just give some, like, little quick uh, facts about it. So, between uh, December 1968 and October 1969, the killer was attributed to five uh, people for sure in the San Francisco area. But he claims to have killed at least, uh, I think it was, like, 37 people. And... uh yeah, he he operated in the the burbs of the Northern of, uh, California area. Yeah, see, they say Northern California, but I don't agree with that because I feel like the Bay Area is Southern Cal- or not Southern California, but uh, Central California, like Mid California. But people always attribute it like below that they always go to Bakersfield for the uh, Central California. But I feel like anything Bay Area is like Central California. Anything well, Sacramento and up is like Northern California. That's yes, how I feel too, ties. but they always consider Bay Area Northern. But yeah, uh, that's what it's not just, just saying, the Bay Area, but he also uh there's there it's thought that he was also doing shit in uh fucking LA and shit. But yeah, I'm just talking about shit, the ones that a lot the, of the serial the killers at sure. the time. Like there was a lot of serial killers at the time. Like some of the kill the kills oh, that yeah, have they're... mistakenly been attributed to the Zodiac at the time were actually the Golden State killer. But didn't they find who that was recently? Yeah, with like yeah. the 23 and Me thing. And but also here, here's um, something. Even even a lot of the 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 confirmed kills, they, they still they, believe, the they still believe that it could have been possibly other killers that did those too. What's but that it, one? I just it says yeah. serial killers. The Wikipedia Encyclopedia of Serial Killers. And then there's oh, nice. the big book of serial killers. So I got three here, and I'm gonna oh. I'll go to the to the trivia one first, just because there might be some weird shit in it. Because it's trivia, I don't, you know. But did we ever? Um, I don't know what I was gonna say. I was gonna say uh, though, the, even the victims they say were his. The, there's still like investigations into other fucking people that they think possibly did it the only thing that really links him is that he gives details to the victims that nobody but the killer would be able to know wouldn't it be funny if the zodiac killer is actually a fucking network of uh serial killers in california and they just get together (laughs) if i could they kill this is how i did this hey this is how i did this like oh sick like it's like a fucking dark web but it's actually like a, a not 
like a chain letter, but kind of like a newsletter. It's, like, it's kind of like anonymous, together. but for like serial killers to just like a whole yeah. mass group of them just all get at their job and fucking just murk people. Like killing, and they're like, I'm going to send you, this in. You like killing couples in cars? I like killing couples in cars. <laughs> we have so much hurt. in common. <laughs> How about um, we go do this together? You know, let's go. Uh, you don't have to go to, to the old make out point and uh, serial serial killers. A couple. Com. So. I don't know if Mike was going to cover that. Why he's called the Zodiac? Oh, you he called himself that. that. Yeah, that's a that's one of the yeah. letters he wrote. So yeah, the, the, yeah. The, I was just saying because, because we we probably should have started with it's like yeah. His we'll name's start with first. yeah. The crazy thing about the Zodiac Killer is, um, and you see this in like other pop culture things, especially uh, in Hannibal or or Silence of the Lambs, but he wrote to the media. And he wrote to the cops. He fucked with them. He would kill people, and then he would write a letter. And yeah, which he swore that what was it? Uh, he would send a what? Which he is a good like therapeutic cipher. thing to do. He sent like little ciphers in each letter to the police that he yeah. swore up and down was going to spell decode his actual fucking identity. The, the one that said that it had his name in it has never been solved. Or actually, I think it might have been solved like super recently, and it was a fucking. Well, the the it's most all clever. It's like solved was in uh, twenty twenty, but it never yeah it never gave his name. There's still two more ciphers that haven't been solved out of the four yeah. that he sent. But in. the one the one that was solved in twenty twenty was supposed to be the one that had his name in it, and apparently it wasn't. It fucking trolled him. Well, they used, a, so. uh, they used a they used a. I forgot the fucking guy's name. I'd have to scroll to the the point, but he, uh, I guess the people who cracked the 2021 used the name of someone that they they thought was going to be that they thought was the suspect, you know, and they used Mm -hmm. his name to crack the cipher. And then they sent it into the FBI and the FBI has to confirm it and all that shit. But the guy who they sent it in, I forgot his name. I had to go look, but, uh, he's dead though. He died in like 2018. So even if it was him, I mean, they'll find out if it was him or not, but, they uh they don't know. Dude, did they really want to get... been, the only DNA that he ever left was the DNA that he sent in on the stamps. Yeah, <clears throat> for the uh for the they letters that he sent If the police really him. wanted to, if the police really wanted to fuck with them, they wouldn't even have called him the Zodiac Killer. They should have just called him the the decoder or the decoder or something stupid, something hella dumb. And be like, I told you guys. I told you guys. They were probably so scared to set this guy off, though. They were probably walking on eggshells. They they were walking on eggshells, especially since he said that he was going to camp out with a a rifle, shoot the tires on a bus, and then pick them off as they on on a a school bus, and then pick them off as they came out. The kids. You you guys. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, That was in one of the letters he sent that he said he was going to do that. I think the real reason, though, he chose that name, though, is because he's an astrology fanatic. And the thought of uh, and thought and thought killing and speaking code is such a Sagittarius move. And he also <laughs> stated later to the police that they were total cancers because they were all crabby about the situation. <laughs> Are you being serious? <laughs> Grab the no, I, I just, I just. So when I was taking notes, I, I've, be, I've, I've evolved into taking notes with my own thoughts in red. <laughs> and that's something I wrote down. The other day. You'd grab the morning newspaper and be like, "All right." Oh, right after I wrote why, why he was be called week. the Zodiac, then I wrote my own little thoughts, and I've done that across pages now and stuff. It's I've, I've taken a liking of making my own little side notes outside of the actual notes. So he got his name from a watch. Is that yeah, is a, I got it from? Yeah, it was a it was a watch that the Zodiac had bought. He's like, does I really like look into watches. Does, he, does it say that in one of his ciphers? Because there's someone that they accused. Is that who they based of, uh, Skyler off of? And someone, Hero? someone that said that he was a Zodiac or whatever. They accused him of being the Zodiac, and that like one of the things that they were going off was because he wore a Zodiac watch. But I don't know if, how they would know if the actual killer was rocking one of those or not. You know what I mean? Unless he, he said, said it in a yeah. letter. I'm wearing a 1965 Zodiac watch. Come find me in the city. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most generic watch too. It's like the fucking Walmart fucking special. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm going to, I'm going to start. Get, 
Um, I'm going to start killing people too. And uh, I'm going to be called the waterproof SpongeBob wa no. watch from Burger King in the 90s killer. <laughs> Just, oh, no, wait, just no, every no, time you kill someone, just scratch. leave one of those yeah. like cheap ass like Spider Man or like a fucking SpongeBob watches that just like pop open, but it's like the basic ass digital fucking uh, numbers. You know, it's like you know the black and white, and it just has a small rectangle screen, and uh, it looks like a fucking calculator almost. And uh, just one of those watches, you kill someone, just lay it on their forehead or something, and just walk away, or put it on their wrist for them. You want to I don't know why he keeps doing in this. Early 2000s, I used to like to wear those watches, and then when I took them off, I used to like to smell my wrist where they were at. <laughs> 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 I think they're the scratch and sniff ones. I don't fucking remember. But I don't think SpongeBob. Oh, I think I know what you're talking 90s. about. Is that 2000s? No, I know what you're talking about. They had the scented bands or whatever. Yeah, but... I think that's what... It, I think it was SpongeBob. It could have been anything else. Yeah, I'm sure there was all, all the fucking characters. Like, Scooby-Doo had the like it, that one smelt like Scooby snacks and then SpongeBob yeah. smelt like a sponge. You know what? If they and really no. wanted to find, if they really <laughs> wanted to find the Zodiac killer. No, dude, if you scratch the uh um Scooby Doo he'd smell like peanut butter and if you scratch Shaggy he'd smell like dried cum and dog breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, dude, if they really wanted to catch the Zodiac killer, they should have just got the mystery team. Oh my god. <laughs> Row, row. and then you see a Zodiac killer fucking shooting teenagers. <laughs> Ray row, Ryan fucking... Ruck, <laughs> row, row, Raggy, <laughs> row, row, Raggy. Well, like, what's wrong, Scoop? Who's really Randy? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And then they do that runoff thing after they hear Bell, the Bell, Bell was like shaking it. She's like, Scooby, will you go attack that man for a Scooby snack? And then he's like, oh, and he's like, have over two Scooby snacks. And then Fred gets shot. <laughs> Later, <laughs> and then it's on the news. Later, Scooby Dooby Doo was found with <laughs> with ammunition. Uh, Winchester Western Super X copper coated long. <laughs> Uh, wait, what is it? Long rifle ammunition in his chest and skull. Poor dog. No, but uh, <clears throat> so obviously they never found the killer, but the police did publicly accuse Arthur Allen. He was a school teacher and a convicted sex offender, but he ended up dying in ninety two, and obviously yeah, and also, that wasn't none the of None of these, uh, none of the victims were, um, and it stated this several times. Every time I see the thing, it was like, none of them were sexually molested. <laughs> every time it's like, <laughs> yeah, like that's what the cops were looking for. Every time they'd lift up the woman's skirt and they're like, nope, this one didn't get raped. Well, there was, uh, Jack Terrence was also a big suspect. Do you guys have uh, anything? I, don't... Okay. I, didn't, well, I didn't, I didn't get to any of the suspects, uh, cause. I only got to like the murders. So if you got, so he was a former enlistee in the, in the air force and the Navy, a ham radio operator. He worked for a steel company. He was a foreman at general electric and attendant. And then he was also an attendant on a laundromat. This is just like his career history uh, right here. But uh, his stepson reported him as possible suspect after finding a number of pieces of what he thought were evidence that his stepfather was the Zodiac killer. Items he handed over to the authorities included the following handwriting samples, a hood similar to the one reported by surviving victims, a knife with blood stains on it, undeveloped film with gruesome in images, tape phone conversations where Terrence hint hints he may have been the Zodiac. The problem with this, though, is that the FBI did DNA testing to either incriminate or rule him out but they came back as inconclusive. There was a, it wasn't there was a yes. It, it wasn't a yes or no. It's just what they didn't have enough evidence. I remember this one. This was like, uh, like I believe this shit happened. Like when he, the guy was old, he died in 2006. And I think his stepson or something like that found some, some of his stuff or I think it was after he died. Possibly one of the, the, the second victim, um, shootings whatever um farron and uh magoo. i'm just gonna say magoo because that's what i've been saying in my head magoo. Magoo. so magoo. uh apparently in 1991 he was shown photos of a police lineup by uh george balwart of the vallejo police department 
and he identified Arthur Lay Allen. It was was that the one you're talking about? Did someone say Allen? I thought someone did. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, okay. Yeah. He was a teacher okay, until he yeah. got caught molesting kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was one of the top suspects. But uh, <laughs> is that how he got caught? Is that how he became a sex offender? Because he was fucking the kids. Well, obviously yeah, that's uh, how he did it. But I mean, like I, at the school. I thought, I thought I thought you said the Allen thing. He was, was jailed for child molestation during the period that the Zodiac stopped killing. He was in jail. Okay. Yeah. That's like Whoa. that's why a lot of people do think it is Arthur Lee Allen is because his timeline when he was out of jail was when the killings happened and then they just all of a sudden stopped, no correspondence, and it was just happened to line up with the time that he was in jail. And uh when it when talking about serial killers, a lot of them are sexual deviants of some nat- in some nature. Was- um yeah, and and that would make sense because like a lot of people in cars, like it's like, oh, these guys are about to fuck. Like he's yeah. kind of yeah. But, but um I yeah, can read what I got in the book right here because it, it'll tell his occupation history and stuff like that. Or okay. I, I was just gonna uh just say uh the reason why um God damn it, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the reason why say, he was uh, ruled out. Yeah, well no, the reason why Magoo never um identified him in the past. Because this was a 1991 when Mag- when Magoo, yeah, I don't yeah. know how you say that name. It was so a it was a photo lineup. Yeah, yeah, it was a photo lineup, and the reason when they asked why didn't he know before, it's because he said back then apparently, like allegedly, they only gave him names of possible suspects and never photos of their faces, which that's is hilarious true. to me because that's kind of like the police are going, "Excuse me, sir," like when he's in the hospital because he, when yeah. he survived, they're like, "Excuse Did me." Did he happen to say his so- full name? It's like social security <laughs> number. But it's like, excuse, excuse me, sir. I know you're still trying to recover, but can you tell me if any of these names sound like one that's capable of shooting you? Like, it's just like here's a bunch of names. Which one of these sounds like a shooter? John like, Jacobs. <laughs> John. So, Michael I mean, Mathers. If, if, yeah. if, if, that, if this statement was true, then that's like one of the biggest. The history, yeah. one of the biggest police blunders I, in their whole yeah. department. The thing with Arthur Lee Allen is he was the prime suspect and in like the Zodiac movie, they, uh, they kind of like hint that he was it in the movie, the newer movie, you know, um, that's like the big guy that, uh, they, they show he has a Zodiac watch on and stuff like that. Um, but so he was considered the prime suspect but he was dis dishonorably discharged from the navy. He worked as a teacher as an uh, at an elementary school. He also was a sailmaker, a lifeguard, um, and he was also found with bloodstained knives. But he claimed it was from chicken blood, which is like if yeah, if you butcher a fresh chicken, they bleed quite a bit. Uh, oh, yeah, we've, but we've... their blood is like bright. It's like a bright red. It's not as dark. As like uh like if you cut yourself. Um but yeah, he was jailed for ch- for child molestation during the period the Zodiac stopped killing. Um uh, but the problem with, with this whole thing, the reason they couldn't arrest him was uh because his fingerprints and handwriting samples were not a match. DNA testing was done using stamps from the envelopes and came back never negative. However, it was known that Alan did not like licking stamps because the taste of glue made him feel sick. And then in the movie, it had said that uh, he I was would say ambidextrous. That too, if I was a murderer, mailing yeah. him fucking <laughs> yeah. It was said that he was ambidextrous also in the movie, and that he wrote the letters with his uh, other hand. Mm. So, like when they went and tested his handwriting, he wrote with the the hand that he didn't write the letters with. That that's was like a. a that's I never understood accurate. that, like that's the testing the- of the handwriting, because because I did. So I was uh, when I was a kid, I wrote some uh, wrote some shit on you know when I was in daycare, you know I'd write I'd write on shit, you know just to you know just you know cuss words and stuff because I thought I it was would funny. hold the pencil but, different and then start well, writing. It's but yeah, hard. so like they they thought it was me and they accused me of it. And they're like Casey, write your name right here, and I knew what it was for. Like I'm not stupid. Even though I was a kid, I was like, oh, oh they they're know. they're onto my trail. So I just shook my hand a little bit when I was writing. And, and yeah, I've like, done that same thing in school. I don't, like, I don't if you hold it between your first, with it. first two fingers, you know how some people hold a pencil between their yeah, their that's like middle, you just middle and ring. Another popular style yeah. of holding a pencil, and, and it's then you write like that, it's going to look word. different. Yeah, like me and Matthew both hold pencils differently. If I were to hold it the same way he did, it's not going to look the same as the way yeah. I hold it now. 
Yeah, so I like, I got away with it. So I, I don't feel like a handwriting analysis unless they found something that he wrote without them saying, hey, write this sentence. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. That's the that's the only thing you can go ahead and continue, Mike. I just I just don't understand how that would be. Yeah, yeah. A, it would be a, funny. It's a like good forensic. Let me go thing back to, to the page I was at because there was there was another one. I that, a light on. There was another one that was considered it. Um, suspect Louis Myers. He uh, lived from 1951 to 2002, and apparently he confessed on his deathbed that he was the Zodiac killer. Oh yeah, um, I was I saw something about that. Yeah, he attended the same schools as the first victims. He worked at the same place as the second female victim. He was able to access the military boots through his father's work. He served in the army. He was a long-haul truck driver, which would uh, explain why there was killings in L.A. and shit like that. Um, petty theft, and he, got, he had a petty theft and disorderly conduct charge and conviction, and he was stationed in Germany at a military base during the period that the Zodiac wasn't killing. The problem is... Uh, he did not fit the physical description. Which uh, the phys- was that the, the physical guy? description is he was approximately five eight to five ten in height, curly brown or light reddish brown hair worn in a crew cut, wearing horn rimmed eyeglasses, and usually wore dark clothing. Um, usually wool trousers and dark navy blue or black windbreaker jacket, distinctive military chukka boots known as wing walkers. Medium or slight stocky build, odd walking gait, shoe print sizes with ten and a half, glove size seven, slow monotone voice. See, uh, that's um, that's crazy. Um, because that Magoo guy said that it was a a, a white a white male with the five eight or five nine. The Magoo and he and said that. Uh, yeah, yeah and, that, that's what that. Yeah, yeah, and he said he was in his late twenties or early thirties with a stocky build, round face, and brown hair. And I was thinking, huh. Round face and stocky Bill, all it's missing is the whiskey colored hair, and it might have been me. Time travel. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> was that the one that guy who on the deathbed was that the one he confessed it to whoever was with him at his deathbed and told him to write a book about it? I don't, I don't know. What are the guys um, like? Keep my family's name out your mouth because that because that one would be cool out, go if go it wasn't your- like, oh yeah, this is what I did, this is how I did it. Write a book about me. I feel like yeah. that. Would, like if that was if it's the same guy, like I feel like that person was just probably blowing smoke up someone's ass. And he's like, he's like, well, this guy died. He has no family. I'm just gonna say that he was a zodiac and write a book about him. No, dude, that's, like, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if that happened or not, but I feel like that'd be like some shady shit that somebody. Yeah, but probably yeah, you, doing. you really especially can. if he was at the height of it, or like people were like, because when did this guy die? What year uh, was it? Oh, the one that confessed, uh, 2002. Yeah. So, I guess the other one was the first um, cipher get decoded. What year was that? I forgot. Let me the the thing with this guy too, uh, this one that I'm talking about is he went to school with the first ones. He was younger than the rest. Like uh, I guess a lot, it was 69. So I guess younger. it was a long. I guess it was a quite a distance. But I guess oh, like, I don't uh, know. that that would be a long con. I feel like I feel like that'd be a lot of work to put in just to bullshit. So never mind. Yeah, well, it's, if, you say it's, if they were close, do you know when the cipher got decoded? I was like, yeah. oh, maybe they were trying to do it, but it was all the way back in like '69 when it, the first one got decoded. I know there, so, there's a there's a lot of fucking um, uh, God damn it, can't think fucking hurricanes. Um, yeah, '69. There's a lot of con- controversy around the first like uh, death. Because it was like the one with the least information, other than just the names, really. Uh, David Arthur that. Faraday. Yeah, it was, but it was. Um, I was just like, are you talking one of the suspected ones? Like, uh, yeah, one of the suspected Robert things, Domingo the, and Linda Edwards. Well, there, um, there was another popular one in the, I, I don't know, in the nineties. Uh, the former Vallejo Police Department uh, detective John Lynch claimed that that. That they were murdered because Faraday was aware of a drug deal and talked openly about who was involved with it. So they're saying that it could have been like a hit of drug dealers just randomly. Mm. But I mean, but honestly, who knows? They were just I read some things where they were saying that out of all the kills, like that was the least precise by the Zodiac killer, other than listing yeah. the names of the crime. Names. So, yeah, uh, David Faraday, Faraday and Betty Lou, David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen were the ones in the car. But uh, in 1963, yeah, in 1963, there was a similar one. This one is suspected, it's not proved. On uh, June 4th, 1963, of 
another two people in a car being Robert Domingo and Linda Edwards, two mm-hmm. teenagers. Well, 17, 18. Wait, we guys, can go through all how... the, the five main, uh, the five main oh, yeah. ones that were yeah, attributed. Let's, let's yeah, if you guys want to do that. that. I, I would this... love to talk about the first, uh, the first ones. <laughs> yeah. And this, in this one, his, in like this book, it says his number of victims is five to 37. Yeah, that's why there's yeah. five confirmed ones, but he, I guess he said that he killed 37 himself. Yeah. Which, it, which honestly, like if this guy is out here fucking like toying with the police saying, oh, I killed these people and these people end up showing up dead. Who's to say that there, there's so many missing people. Yeah, but also, the, yeah the, span, the, the span of that time, you got to think because to get away with it, you have to be very meticulous, like, and very crafty. It would it'd be understandable if it was a, an amount through a long amount of years. I don't know how long they're saying this rain. Yeah, lasts. but it doesn't say that how long he doesn't say how long he's been at it. He yeah, just that's says true. this is that, how many people part, have killed. But if it was in like a short fucking span, I mean, there's no way he did all. And maybe of them. maybe he was doing them all low key to begin with, like his first ones he was doing low key. But then he was like, you know what? He's like, I, 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 I fucking pretty with, good at this. He started with the I just fucking people. with the police, and then he starts making spectacles out of them. And he's like, oh, he, uh, these people he, make a scene. It's thought that he like, honestly, served in the military. It, maybe he served and killed well, and, and like then you, thirty people you in the think military. About the time, think about oh, the yeah, timeline this is true. too. <laughs> he could have been killing. He could have been killing like minorities. I never and, even thought about uh, that. And um, he could have been killing like minorities and stuff in the country. And at the time, that didn't get as much coverage. He could have been killing yeah. people of different ethnicities. There, stuff, there's a big serial killer that was from Atlanta like that. that was like killing tons of tons of yeah. Tons and of you couldn't people. you nobody would cover. It's like the Candyman movie like kind of thing. It's like oh dude, nobody cares. It's like oh yeah, another that, thing like, in the, dude. In the Richard Ram- and to them it was like a victimless crime. It's like oh, it's just R- another Richard Ramirez. Uh, Wait, Matthew, who, you, Richard Ramirez. Also, there was like that murder in Yuba City too. That was it was similar like that. Yeah. The. But yeah, like Richard Richard Ramirez, he typically killed, uh, you know, right. people in poor areas and, and, yeah, and like the ghetto areas. People but that's where that's where he, under, that's where he people, was and stuff. People care more about a rich uh, white girl than they do about fucking anybody else. Yeah, but they then again, like a poor white poor. person gets killed, no one fucking cares either. It's, yeah, it's, no, yeah, it's, no, it's, I don't. I wouldn't too. say that it, it, it's. But it would get more coverage. If, if, yeah, if back then it has to do with thing. race, but it's like it's a financial thing, also. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, um, you hear more stories about rich white girls going missing than you oh yeah about anybody else. But I'm just saying in general, like but, I, yeah, I you know how many like serial like, killers like, killed like just exclusively killed hookers and just fucking went on. Yeah, for because, years it's because people of it. that nobody gives a shit. Because again, we were talking about this before the pod. Police say honestly, we're not gonna it's, catch them. It's because it's not like low, it's attacking, it's a uh, low priority like, in their eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, eh, like another a, another, another, another homeless person criminal died, or something. Another yeah. prostitute died. Modern day, another prostitute died. Another whatever died. Well, any uh, genre or any era with the prostitute part. This in their I'm eyes, they were above people and every anybody who was below them. Like if they weren't in like a you know an, a standard line of work, they were just like scum to them, you know. And yeah. That's, yeah. And that's how that's how they viewed the people. It's like, oh yeah, or like if they were a different color and, and they end up dead, you know. It was, it's like, it was oh yeah, it's like it's time. like they're not they're not important enough for us to it's waste the, our man the, hours to go yeah. fucking do. So that's it's why that's why I feel yeah. like a lot of a lot of murderers got away with shit back in the day because nobody oh, no. gave yeah, a it's fuck. The, about. It's the status yeah. of the Dude. era. Of yeah, the guy in people. Yuba City, uh, Juan, uh, Juan uh, Crona, he killed like twenty five people. Was that Holy the uh, was that the original coronavirus? Yes, <laughs> dude. There was just, well, recent, there was just I think recently what it was, a serial killer in Sacramento. Yeah, he was taking like labor, like who, who like, was like shooting Mexican people, Mexican well, dudes. Yeah, this guy would sack. take. I I think he would basically have uh, people. He would kill people and bury them in orchards. But he'd have workers, like he'd have workers come over, kind of do shit, and then he would just kill them and um, bury That's them in the orchard. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. I need you to take these apples, and I'm gonna murder you, bury you next to the trees, and then I'm gonna go hire another group of fucking workers. And he was probably just honestly, honestly, he was probably just because he was probably just targeting migrant workers too. Yeah, no, that's what it was. was. Uh, Yeah, 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 he was uh, people. That's it, because you can get away with that because they disappear easily. Yeah, yeah. No one's gonna come looking for him, especially if they're not supposed to be here on their own. Not saying all of them. Are not yeah, supposed not, to be not like you know, not all of them are undocumented, but you know, if it's a undocumented person gets killed, 
it's not going to be as easy to find them, uh, like and find and out who they you know are crazy? and find out who did it. Well, it's been married twice and has and four they're probably kids. not even care that That's much insane. to find out. Damn, four fucking kids. That's insane. The four kids part. No, I'm just kidding. No, the um, fact that they they could be regular people on, yeah. on the surface. But yeah. um, but yeah, the um, even if they were documented, I was gonna say because they can usually be like, well, we haven't heard from them, so they they must have like left back or something stupid yeah like nobody they don't care because everybody's kind of the golden you know, state killer got caught shit. as an old man so he was someone's neighbor and just chilling for years we ribs with snipping. this dude but snipping. we didn't have well, a they, clue they they used to have that show <laughs> that was on uh <laughs> man i missed Dead old giveaway. Fox, but i think it was on fox but it was uh they was uh the one was like oh yeah I was married to a murderer or something and then they were like married for like fucking twenty married years and then they end up end up one day you know this fucking police SWAT you know raids mm-hmm. their house and then homeboy gets arrested and they're and then he was like the most upstanding member of society like everybody loved him he was yeah. a good guy blah 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 Went but to in every Sunday. Reality, he was out there murdering fucking ten fifteen people and then I, they're like oh I I never Never I mean, would have both, seen this guy do both Gacy, both Gacy and Bundy were involved in local politics and like <laughs> members of the church and shit. And like that's that's that so makes was sense B- to me that so politics and the church. BTK was a fucking uh like the leader of his church or BTK. something. Like he was a he was makes a leader sense. of of uh like he was a major pillar of of the community. Yeah, Gay, you know, Gacy you know? was a fucking clown on the side, and he had dead kids and his fucking like whatever. Yeah, Gay, Gacy would fucking dress up as a, cow, had to a, a clown for 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 oh, parties. Yeah, oh, it did. Smell. I watched, it did I watched smell. the documentary and I laughed. It's fucked up, but I laughed. Like one of the people that got away, like mm-hmm. it, it, the person went to his place and it's like, hey, you want to see a, a trick? And he's like, yeah, sure. And he, he put the handcuffs. hands up. Yeah, yeah on the kid, it's like he's like, what's the trick? It's like the trick is trying to get him off. <laughs> no, the trick is like you you have to have the key right or something yeah yeah the yeah. trick is you have to have the key or whatever yeah, yeah. and he got away but it's insane Damn. because it's like you think you start G- smelling something going past his house yeah G- like, all, all serial killers are fucked up but gacy was pretty fucking gacy is something fucked. else because he puts the terror in clowns dude what his Take preferred it. may have his preferred method of killing people was strangulation yeah, and he it, he it, he would take a rope and then he would twist like a uh, a rod or a wrench or something behind it to tighten it. Dude, one of the fucking victims when they found them, their windpipe and their throat was so was that small. Jesus Christ! Because that's how much he fucking cinched Dude, it and down. And not to mention that he had and he had an American it was like inch and a half, name. inch and a half, two inches name. around. John Wayne, <laughs> like dude, it's fucked up. John Wayne Gacy. Like, yeah, like that's like the Zodiac. He seemed like a. It was he seemed a quick, like more of an opportunity killer. Like, um, there's been ones that have caught like the DC snipers, um, and shit like that. They're 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 harder to catch because they don't target anyone in general. They, it's crimes of opportunity. Yeah, the, the second um, victims on the Zodiac's like list, he literally it was an abandoned uh, like a secluded parking lot. He came up with a flashlight, like a police officer, and then yeah. just, bam, like well, yeah. Well, and then there's the the couple that was uh, at the lake. Yeah, I was gonna say you if know? we want, we can get into like oh, yeah. the, the the order, yeah, like we said, racking them up by order. But yeah, I, I would say that pro- one of the I think that one of the reasons the Zodiac wasn't killed is I think he he uh, he didn't plan his killings. Or I think he was just a a murder by opportunity, stroll, and then he was just like, oh, dope! I already got my gun. Went in yeah. Rome. Like, like, uh, that's usually like what starts to like what gets a lot of killers caught is they, they will kill people in their immediate vicinity, you know, or people that they know or some shit like that. Yeah. And that's why it's the one, the ones that really rack up the fucking, a lot of kills deaths are the ones that just, they, they, they just kill whoever. So you know they don't have a a big pattern or what whatever. Yeah, they're like crime of passion yeah. kind of shit. Yeah, no, they were just like, hey, I'm gonna do this. So, okay, as we already said, Zodiac Killer has been directly linked to five murders and possibly more in Northern California or Central California, Casey and Mike. Yes, uh, in 1968 and 1969 through then. So, um, yeah, we already got that part out of the way. I'll go Sorry. ahead and read the, the, David, the David. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. 
So I just wanted to, I just thought something that baffles me about the Zodiac too, unless, unless he was killing and just like getting away with it really good is a lot of killers. Um, they, they ramp up. They always have to, to do it more often. Uh, the, yeah, they ramp up in intensity because it's like, an like it's, Ted it's Bundy. Like a, it's like yeah. an OCD thing. It's like they need to do it. Yeah, Ted Bundy. He talked. He talked about uh, was it called Dexter, the Dark Passenger? It's like it's just, yeah. Ted Bundy. He talked about like the killings that happened uh, where he went to like the sorority house and beat three women to death with an oak branch. He didn't plan on doing that. He just walked by. It was like he couldn't control himself. By that point, he said that he couldn't control himself anymore. So the first victims, David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen. There we go. Yeah. So according to the police reports, they were approximately attacked at. I kept getting different numbers for this, but it the one I just wrote down was 1115 p.m. But I I kept seeing different numbers from different things. I I saw that they uh, they pulled in at 1015 p.m. and their bodies were found at 11. Okay, so then they were just so between between them. between ten and eleven. Okay, yeah, so between ten and eleven p.m. in uh, Faraday's uh, <laughs> station wagon on Lake Sherman Road, the killer Mom's. apparently approached the vehicle and fired shots inside inside the vehicle in an attempt to force them out of the vehicle. Oh, I said vehicle way too many times. Faraday, who was age seventeen, was shot in the head while exiting the vehicle, dying in minutes. Jensen, who was only 16, attempted to flee on foot, but was shot five times in the back and died instantly at about 28 feet from the car. And, um, yeah, it's well, I'd hope so. If I got shot five times and then died slowly, I'd be kind of pissed from what this. And I I probably read this like really weird and wrote it down really weird. But it said the weapon used was a 22 caliber semi-automatic pistol and then said the ammunition was a uh, um, Winchester Western Super X copper coated long rifle. Ammo. Yeah, it's 22 okay. long rifle. It's that's the standard 22 okay. round. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure. But the crime yeah. scene was discovered. I thought the short ones are the standard ones and the long ones for the No, the long rifles they aren't <laughs> like the common 22 round. <laughs> that's all but you find it in handguns too. Yeah. yeah. But that shit once it enters you for at least for it a human bounces. being most of the time. Yeah, it doesn't. There's no like exit most time. Like just a, head, a headshot with a 22, it bounces around in there. It bounces around, yeah. It, it has enough power to go through the skull, but not out the other side, and so it'll bounce around. Yeah, so a 22 cool. will mangle you from the inside. Damn. So that's, that's why, I like with gators and shit, they use 22. <laughs> Uh, the the crime scene, I guess, was the. I'm trying to make sound color. effects of the bones. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite good on toast. Oh wait, no, that's the jelly. Is that what like the, like movie artists do when they do the sounds? They like celery. take some stalks of celery, yeah, for like bone breaking. I'm dude. just doing it with cheese. Oh yeah, dude. I've always been interested in that stuff, and actually, that kind of plays into one of my Foley. ideas for a side pod. All right, so I don't know. Jump who's going back into the Zodiac is. killer. I don't know exactly who Stella Borges is, but she was the one that found the the body, or he. I don't mm. really know. Or just or is thing. it is Stella? Oh, was that the friend? Yeah, that was a friend of uh... Stella. Yeah. Um, you know what this though reminded me of the whole the whole timeline because you guys know how fallouts and fucking um yeah, it's like year, the fifties. Yeah, to, yeah. So it oh, I guess she me... lived by, uh, nearby. She didn't. I guess it was uh, her okay. I heard shots, mummy. No, um, so I'm just yeah, go investigate. This whole this whole crime scene of the guy running out of the car, as soon as he gets out, he gets fucking shot. And then when the girl's running, he turns around and shoots her multiple times. So <laughs> it kind of reminded me of Fallout when you get bored, <laughs> so you use your vats on fleeing townsfolk. <laughs> and while, uh, and um, all while playing Civilization, the Bongo 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 song by uh <laughs> apparently it's from Danny K. Uh, if, you know, you play it on your pit boy. So he's just like blasting that shit. Bongo, bongo, bongo. I don't want to leave the Congo. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's what it reminded me of. As soon as you go into the slow motion vat, the guy gets out of the car, one shot critical to his head. And then the, like the woman's running and then you got to turn back around and do the rest of your vats on her. And you have zero. So he had a six shooter. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, did he? Six shots. Shot the dude once in the head, then oh yeah, shot the chick five times. Didn't even have to reload. 
<laughs> efficient. Well, they said the gun was a uh, was they uh, twenty two caliber semi automatic pistol. Oh yeah, that's not a six shooter. Oh, okay. Yeah, so how, many, how many shots does that thing hold? Probably it ten. Depends on you, the gun, but like oh, yeah, well, with, with the twenty two, you're probably getting like well, I don't know, like twelve Cali- to twenty. Northern was California he, in the nineteen six uh, late nineteen sixties. I, I don't know when the when was the magazine ban on dude that was that was recent dude way was recent. recent oh yeah, yeah so dude, you probably that was had like, way more that was like five that was five to ten years ago in between there yeah it could it could have been any any size that they had available whatever their magazines were back in that day well it's like if it comes yeah. to stock magazine I'm just thinking how many bullets you can stack on on top of it so it probably it probably be like, a pretty small round so you can yeah, probably yeah, that's what I was thinking. a bunch in there it's probably some kind of like tin fucking mag just like a 1911 or something probably stack up on like 15 rounds in a handle right Matt that seems about right uh yeah, that's not, yeah I don't know like, yeah like 10 I mean, to 15 could, rounds probably maybe yeah because because I always know I mean, when you d- go shooting the 22 ammo is the first to go because it just goes by so fucking quick. 20, uh, 22, 22, it's a, it's feels a very like skinny a fucking pellet gun. The round, ra- yeah. yeah, the round is very small, so you could probably fit like a lot. Air rifle. Yeah, so I, I don't, I have no idea. I'm not really that savvy, but yeah, um, it, it probably, I'd, I'd say anywhere from eight to 15 rounds. That's just calling it good. Eight on the very low end, mm-hmm. but I'm thinking 10 or more, definitely. No, uh, so the next murder was out the Blue Rock Springs murder on July 4th, 1969. That That's, was in uh, Rock Springs, Vallejo. What were you going to say? Was that the one by the lake? This one? No, that's the next one. This one oh, was okay. a parking so lot. This, yeah, this Another one was a... Uh, well, I think that was like... Okay, so this one was... Uh, this was four miles away from the previous uh, murder. Yeah. And uh, so they... Parked in a parking lot, yeah. And the when they were parked there, another car pulled up and then drove away. And then ten oh, minutes later, comes back yeah. and parks behind him and then walks up with a flashlight and uh, a nine millimeter and uh, blinds them, fires five times into uh, both uh, both victims. They were uh, hit several times and Did, uh, didn't the woman survive? No, the man did. And this the man, man did. Uh, oh. The killer walked away. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. But and then he, ca- he he walked away and he came back and he shot him two more times each yeah. before leaving. Dude, yeah, that's 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 me, by the way, can I just say something? The fact that, okay, not only like, um, like I read a couple of different things. Wikipedia said some of the shots went through a good old Magoo there and hit the woman. I, I forget mm-hmm. her name. Jens? Was it Jensen? Darlene. Darlene. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, uh, it's it's not hilarious, but kind of is because he walked away and Magoo there, you, screamed in agony, and he's just like, "Motherfucker, was that a <laughs> comeback and flawless victory?" My ass scream, and then came back and shot both of them again twice. He's like, "Fuck that." Yeah. So uh, what Darlene are the chances was... that he ran out of ammo, had to go back, get a couple more rounds? <laughs> That's what I thought of too. Honestly, it could yeah, it might not have been his screams that brought him back. But he's screaming in agony, and he's just like, ah, damn it. <laughs> yeah. So Darlene was pronounced dead at the hospital. Uh, Michael, he survived the attack, yeah, but he was shot in the face, chest, and neck, though. Um, he described the attacker as a 26 to 30-year-old male, about 195 to 200 pounds, uh, maybe a bit more. Uh, white male, short brown, curly hair. And then on July 5th, 1969, at 12.40 a.m. Wait, I'm sorry, can you say that? La- Did you say short round? Isn't that the character from uh, Indiana Jones? I said short, curly, uh, oh, I short, you curly brown. Short. I thought you said short and round. <laughs> My bad. Keep going. But uh, <laughs> that, that's he called the police station, that's claim us. responsibility <laughs> for the attack and the previous attack that mm-hmm. happened. Uh, the previous two attacks that happened six and a half months earlier, and the police traced the call to a gas station phone booth. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, the second the, one. Like this, this, this one follows an mo, and, and like it usually, it, most of them follow an mo. It's always couples, young couples. Um, at least for the for like a good amount. Wonder. Uh, I think the only one that was different was the taxi driver. Taxi yeah, I was, gonna, driver. I was gonna say the guy who got the guy who survived there. What was his name? Uh, Michael. 
I wonder if he went on to live a full life or what hey, happened. Say his or last, I never, I never, his last name. I didn't write down their last names. So I only wrote down their first names because I feel like that's more natural. Well, his his last name was name spelled last name. Yeah, but they, usually people use last names when it comes to like fucking whatever things. I just think it's yeah. funny. His last name is M A G A E U, I think. So I just Magoo. been calling him Magoo. That's what I've been calling him Magoo. 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 It's probably Magia. Is it Magia? I wrote Magia? their I wrote their last names down in the, originally, like when I first because uh, I, I Magia. listened to them. Magoo. Joe. Are you gonna tell us about the Lake Berryessa murder? Berryessa? Is that how you say it? Yeah. You've never been there? Yeah. No, I've never French. been there. I've never been there. My Joe. That's I've crazy. never like I've never hung out there, but I've I've driven past it many times. Where is it? Where where is like Berryessa? So it's it's it's, it's north from? of of Napa. It's it's north of Vallejo. Is it close to Vegeta? It's 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 kind of uh yeah, I've always driven. I've driven past it a couple times. Uh, yeah. So it's like you always see the signs if you head down to the bay because you're driving through Vacaville and Fairfield and shit. You'll always see the signs. So at Lake Berryessa on September 27th, 1969, the next two victims were attacked by the Zodiac. Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were tied up before being stabbed. Shepard was able to give a description of the shooter before, before she died a few days later after being shot. Hartnell survived the attack. That's all I got on it. But yeah, this one is like, this one's fucky. So these, this couple is essentially just out enjoying the lake, having a picnic, what have you. Um... And then Zodiac comes up in this weird fucking like, like it looks like a fucking Klansman outfit, but black, doesn't it? Like, except without a pointy hat. <laughs> it's not as, it's not pointy, but it looks like a fucking clan, like, like an executioner hood where, or something Where are like you that. seeing this picture at? There, it was in the one, there's been a picture drawn out of it, uh, based on the description that the, the survivor, well, survivor for a couple of days gave. Where the survivor gave, and then uh, they use that in the movie. Oh, I don't, like, I don't remember the movie. I've seen it like a long time ago, but yeah, but it's like this fucking. He, he, it looks like a fucking Klansman outfit, is what it looks like. Except it's all black, and then there's a zodiac sign on it. And but like instead of having a pointy hood, it's like more like an executioner's hood. Oh yeah, and that's the one. That's the one where he like wore the sunglasses over the eye holes and shit. Yeah, and then he uh. He comes up on them, holds them at gunpoint, uh, ties them up, stabs the dude, and then shoots the woman, and then fucks off. It's like, like, and yeah, the way one... he, the way he got them to to tie, help tie each other up or get tied up is he told them he wasn't killed them; he was just there to rob them, and then he didn't take in any other stuff; he just killed him. Well, killed one of them. That's crazy. I think if anyone has me at gunpoint. They're gonna kill me, kind of thing. That's like my mentality. Oh, yeah. If someone points a gun at me, it's like, well, yeah, it's like one well, of us is about I'm... to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'd say either you go along with it until they can get close enough, or you can figure out something. But it's like you don't tighten anyone up. It's like that. You're you're already kind of fucked. <laughs> so so with that one, it was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, did you say that like what he did after he killed him? I I have not got there yet. Um, but oh, okay. go ahead and take. Uh, go ahead and go for it. I wasn't sure if you were done with. Uh... I'm I'm done with descri- describing it. I just you know. So, so what happened is that Cecilia didn't uh, tie up Brian too good. She tied him up loose, you know, obviously. Yeah. So probably so he can escape. And then uh, the killer found out about that, got pissed, uh, stabbed Brian six times, Cecilia ten times. I don't. Uh, no, did both of them die or just one of them? Um, I one of them, I believe. I believe the woman died one of them. after a couple of days. She was also oh. shot. Oh yeah, Brian. Brian lived. Okay, yeah. So yeah. she she on the way to the hospital, she fell into a coma and then she regained consciousness and or never regained consciousness and died two days uh, later. Yeah. But uh, so the killer hiked back. He hiked after he killed after he killed him. He hiked up to their <laughs> car, which is five hundred yards away drew the circle with the cross in it and then wrote beneath it. He wrote Vallejo 12, 20, 68, 7, 4, 90 or 69, September 27, 69, 630 by knife. 
And that was that was the message he wrote on the side. Yeah, of it was it, it was uh it was his killings. Yeah. And then uh at seven forty he called the Nampa County Sheriff's Office or Napa, sorry, not Nampa. Uh Napa County Sheriff's Nampa. Office and uh <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's got well it's because there's a there's a Midnight Nampa Nampa. where I live, so that's why yeah. I said that. But uh there's a Napa uh, where we live too. He said he wanted uh he said uh Not a he radish. called in and he's like, Oh, I wish to report a murder. No, a double murder. And then he said he's the one who committed the crime. And then uh a reporter by the name of Pat Stanley found the phone still off the hook a few minutes later at the car wash a few blocks away from the sheriff's office. And the crime scene was twenty seven miles away from him. And the detectives lifted a small wet palm print, but were never able to match it to anybody. Well, didn't he wear he was wearing print. gloves too? Like during the killing. It was but I probably, guess he just, took the it was probably just wet from the people, you know, because they're by the lake. So they're maybe their pants were wet. <laughs> well, he wore gloves during the killing. So maybe he washed his hands afterwards. Yeah, maybe. Maybe his hands were wet because of that. So they, uh, so a man and a son, they were fishing nearby and they, they're the ones who discovered the couple and, uh, they're the ones who contacted the park rangers. Uh, and, uh, that's when, uh, they, uh, Can imagine Cecilia walking still... up on something like that. Yeah, no, the girl You're just was out conscious. like taking your kid fishing, and then it's like, oh shit, there's two dead people here. Look away, son. Like, yeah. <laughs> dude, that would fucking suck. Like, I would not want to come up acro- across a come a- across a dead body. Yeah, well, I mean, they weren't dead yet. They were, I mean, they were fucking mangled pretty bad because Cecilia is the one who told the the son and the father the description of the the murderer, and then Brian, I'm pretty sure, was passed out at this point. Because yeah, I guess he's a bitch. I don't know. Cecilia can take pain. I think nah, nah, nah. women have a higher like pain st- tolerance. Six times would be pretty fucking rough, honestly. I'm looking like, at I've never yeah, been stabbed, but, you, but I've you'd had, be, I've had you'd, be, you'd go into shock. You'd, you'd go into shock. You know? Yeah, but I'm just saying for the fact that he was passed out, I made a joke and said he was a pussy, but I'm like, that's what I was saying. I was like, oh, it's probably, it's probably pretty painful, obviously. And then like she was stabbed 10 times though. So kudos on her for staying conscious for when she could. I'm going through these like uh, pictures of like some of the shit and it's like, my God, dude, why were cars so fucking boxy back then? Hey, (laughs) all your cars are fucking sexy. Some of them, but I mean, did the the taxi one? What is that, Paul Stein? That that, that fucking car is too boxy. <laughs> I ain't getting no boxy ass cab. So, <laughs> so what you go- so what you're saying is you would never own like an old Cadillac? No, nah, dude. I no, nah, I, I probably would. I'm just fucking right. Because <laughs> they're too they're too fucking edged. Uh, like everything has corners on it. Like I'm yeah. just looking at these old taxi cabs. You want to know why? Because corners are fucking sexy. It's like <laughs> it's very crafty. <laughs> It's very Minecraft. Yeah. Everything's on pixels. Dude, that, I would never that, live in the sixties. Everything's that, that's pixel. why I jack off to Minecraft Steve every night. <laughs> oh really, dude? I I, I, I jack off to the Minecraft sheep every night. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got any more? We gotta talk about the poor uh, cab driver. Uh, uh, well, we, got, we already kind of started with the yeah. box tech cabs. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I'm, that's that was the last like couple well, like the couple one now now we're on to the other yeah, cabbie and, well the oh, thing with God. with the the previous three that we just talked about too i believe they they all happen within a couple months correct like within the year within the same year for sure I, didn't the cab well, one these, come I later these the all cab one came... was in 69 but all these okay. were like 68 to 69 yeah okay yeah, all these were within the same two years yeah, which are the only year. confirmed ones. Well, it, 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 you know, fuck you. All right, I've been drinking. Why don't you eat my ass? You want to do some other math? What's fucking the first? The first one was December nineteen sixty eight, and the second one was October nineteen sixty nine. So actually, it was less than a year. It was actually only uh, it was only ten months. You know what? I'm glad you wrote that down. Also, I hope you choke on a fucking baked potato, <laughs> you piece of shit. Oh, the potatoes. We got plenty of them up here. So, uh, so, 
So, yeah. The, well, this one is Paul Lee Stein. Yeah. yeah. The, is, he was the oldest of them. No relation. Uh, yeah, this this guy looks like he probably was a pervert prior or just really in the D&D or both. He was actually related right. to uh, uh, what the fucking uh, R.L. Stein. Are you serious? Stein? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's because his name was fucking Paul Lee Stein. So, yeah. You know, so, uh, R.L. Stein. Yeah, he's the oldest of them at 29. Uh, his two victims before that were 22 and then uh, 16 and 17 before that. Um. Yeah, dude, he was fucking. Yeah, he was up there in age. He was probably just bored at this point. He was just like, "All right, I've had enough of killing couples before they fuck. Let me find like a a guy that looks lonely as fuck and drives cabs." <laughs> this Paul one was Stein. so weird because it, it it broke the. That's why. That's why I think the Zodiac was an opera uh uh killer of opportunity because of this one killing. Like the other ones, this they could have been planned. He could have seen a couple followed them, you know what I mean. But then again, he could have just went on, went to places where he knew couples went. Yeah, he you had a map. I mean? He had a map, and he marked all the fucking makeout points on it. And he's like, "All right, I'm gonna yeah. patrol these every day. Um, see what I can get." Seclu- nobody seclu- made out just, with him. I mean, with the with the three previous areas being the lake and the two uh, parking areas, um, there's secluded areas that people go to. To, to be alone, you know? Yeah. So again, it could be, he knows that. And so it is a crime of opportunity knowing that he, he could get away with it. Um, but I don't know. It's it, like, I said, it's, 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 it's this one. It's the fucking cab one that makes me rethink this entire killer because beforehand it's like, Oh, someone, yeah, if, yeah. if you're doing like a profile on him, I assume this is how it goes. Oh, someone who, uh, uh, you know, is targeting couples possibly have been spurned in the past or some shit like that, which was a belief that they brought it up in the Zodiac movie and stuff like that. You build a profile on him like that. And then this killing just kind of throws it off. Yeah. Because they all like, everybody has like an MO. This guy literally attacked a guy where people are going to be looking for him in public areas. Like fucking what he was killed. What, what does it say? Uh, corner of Washington and Cherry. And a presidio, presidio. I don't know. How you say that Heights neighborhood of San Francisco. It wasn't in a fucking secluded area, was he? That's just like on the middle of the street, like on the corner of a street. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. it was. He was uh, in the back of the cabin. He shot him. Oh, and, and oh, then he and got out. Like and then he got out. Taken too. Yeah. So it was on October 11th, 19. Yeah. This is also the first one he robbed. So this one might not even be connected. Yeah, yeah, that's the weird really. thing is he could have just well, taken this, cre- credit for this, it, which people do believe that. But uh, on this one, so there was a missing, there was a missing part of his uh, shirt from uh, the guy oh. who got killed, yeah, and then yeah. the and then the Zodiac sent in that oh, piece trophy. of shirt. Oh, okay. Well, and then that's all letters. for that. That's just supporting my theory of a criminal network of a Zodiac killers, <laughs> the Zodiac network. I mean, I mean, it's a possibility. It's just multiple killers together what if it's just like there's like one fucking family it's all fucked up like texas chainsaw mask or shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the reason well i guess uh so the zodiac got into the cab and he was like oh take me take me to the intersection of mason and gary street and then uh or no that's where he got picked up and he requested to be driven to washington and maple but i guess the cabbie overshot the street and went to cherry and then shot him in the head and then took his wallet keys and tore part of his shirt. And then three teenagers saw him across the street at nine 55 called the police. They saw the guy wiping down the cab before he walked away. And then two police officers, Don Fook and Eric Zelms, they responded to the call, saw the guy walking down the sidewalk, talked to him for about five minutes. And then, uh, he, he went on about his business. And then they drove, met up with the guy they said the guy that they talked to, they asked, like the cops estimated the guy that they spoke to was between 35 and 45, uh, about 5'10 with a crew cut. And the yep. kids described him as 25 to 30 years old, about 5'8 to 5'9 with the crew cut. But I guess the radio dispatchers, when they, uh, when they got the call, I guess the dispatchers told the officers to look out for a black suspect, yep. not a white suspect. So when so, they talked to this guy who was probably 
most definitely the fucking killer. They were just like, what have you seen? Not, not you know what i mean because they thought they were looking for a black dude which is like what the fuck man come on dispatcher you fucking racist piece of shit uh, could have you could have caught this guy yeah so this uh this well i, I don't know if we want to get into the letters right now but i can just go off on the because this is like the second letter that the zodiac sent out yeah and this one uh involves stein so he everyone thought that the stein Murder was a random robbery all up until the point until the San Francisco Chronicle received a letter on October 13th from the Zodiac and he claimed credit for the murder. On October 14th, they received another letter containing Paul Stein's shirt with the bloody shirt part to prove that he was a killer. Also included the threat that he was going to shoot the front tire out of a tire out of a bus and pick up all the kitties that they came bouncing out. Yep. And then... On our, oh, uh, we can get into those ones later. But. Yeah, dude, talk about causing a fucking panic in the community with that last letter. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm taking off work. I'm driving my kid to school. <laughs> <laughs> be yeah, like, I, yes, wonder, I, I wonder how and they then your, handle your, that. Your, like, your your boss would be like, yes, I, yes, I, they uh they put uh cop cars following the buses. Oh, okay, yeah. At which, least in the movie. Probably he, he might have actually, like, okay, so say say he had the cop cars following the buses or whatever. He might have actually done that anyway just to get all the cops, you know, to be preoccupied to guarding these buses so he can go out and fucking do another murder yeah. right underneath their noses and be like, yeah. aha, you stupid Th- fuck. This guy was, a smoke screen. <laughs> this guy was obviously a, a, a pretty smart guy, this, whoever the Zodiac was. Um, because Because... One, just his fucking code stuff alone was intricate and fucking it, 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 it we fucking one just got solved in twenty eighteen. I am sure there's people that's super passionate about the twenty twenty that I assume there's people that are super passionate about this and they fucking try hella hard at this. There's always people trying probably to fucking decode this shit. Yeah, the first uh, Zodiac 408 symbol cipher was solved in 1969 by uh That doesn't sound that incredible when some it's peeps. the same year he was active, <laughs> so it doesn't seem like it was that long after. Well, that was the first one, but there was four of them, and they've only, we've only solved two of them so far, and the second one was solved just two years ago. Yeah. There's one still two that Id- are unsolved. Give one to Idris Elba. He'll solve it. He can do anything. So uh, on August 1st, 1969, that's when the three three letters were sent out. One to the Vallejo Times, uh, Vallejo Times Herald, the uh, San Francisco Chronicle, and the San Francisco Examiner. They were all nearly identical. Each included one third of the 408th cryptogram. And uh, he demanded all of them be printed on the front page or he'd go around all weekend killing people until the uh, in the night until he kills a dozen. And then... Uh, the Chronicle published their third of the cryptogram on page four on the next day's edition. And then uh, the police chief, Jack E. Stilts, is quoted saying, we're not satisfied that the letter was written by the murderer and requests the writer to send a second letter with more facts to prove his identity. And then that's when uh, he uh, responded to the chief's request for more details and uh, he he gave details of murder of the murders that have not been released to the public. And he also said that the police, uh, when the police crack this code, they will have me. And then on August eighth, nineteen sixty nine, Donald and Betty Hardin, they uh, they're the ones who cracked it. Um, which name did they use to crack the code in in twenty twenty? Was it Alan? Uh, oh, Lee I got it. Or? It was a. Uh, Gary Francis Post, P O S T E. Post. Okay. That's uh well, just that video that I sent you guys. That's what it said in that video. So I'm not mm. sure if that's actually true or not. I'm just going off of what that video said. Yeah. But then, uh, so we talked about like Stein and his letter, and then uh, what's it called? Uh, let me see where. La 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 la. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> figure out where I would need it to be. 
in this uh, thing. Okay, so on at 2 p.m. on October 20th, 1969, someone called the Oakland Police Department and claimed to be the Zodiac Killer, demanding that one of these two lawyers, they were, uh, I guess, very prominent lawyers at the time, F. Lee Bailey or Melvin Belly, to go on a talk show on KGO TV hosted by Jim Dunbar. Melvin, oh, yeah. I guess, was available, and he went on the show, and then a man claiming to be the Zodiac under the name of, uh, like he was using the name of Sam, called several times, and the caller would not reveal his true identity because he was afraid to get. The, uh, he was afraid of being sent to the gas chamber, which at the time was California's capital punishment. If you didn't know that, mm-hmm. and they scheduled a uh, they scheduled a rendezvous outside a shop on Mission Street in Daly City, but no one arrived, and the call was ended up being traced back to a mental uh, mental institution. And I guess some some guy there was uh, giving the old the old fucking trickaroony to the people, to the public. But then on November eighth, nineteen sixty nine, the Zodiac made another cryptogram consisting of three hundred and forty letters called the Z three forty is what the people called it, not him. And uh, in the decrypt. Uh, decrypted message the zodiac denied being sam this is the the uh he denied it being sam who spoke on the am san francisco explaining that he was not afraid of the gas chamber because quote uh it will send me to paradise all the sooner yeah i believe he wrote somewhere that uh all he believed that all the people that he killed would be his slaves in the after afterlife yeah he was collecting souls yeah. And uh that that the one that I just uh read was the one that was uh solved in 2020, the one that said that he wasn't Sam and that mm. uh and then apparently that's the one that they used uh Gary Francis Post as a uh, name to solve that one. I don't know if that's true just off of the, based off that video that I yeah. watched. I don't know if that's actually how these people figured it out or how they did that. You have no idea. But that's but fucking, on, that's nuts. I got a couple more and then we can get into the the murderer himself, if you guys like. So on November 9th, 1969, the Zodiac mailed a seven page letter stating that two policemen stopped and spoke with him for three minutes after he shot Stein. Yep. They yeah. And then December 20th, 1969, exactly one year after the murder of David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, the Zodiac met her, uh, mailed a letter to that lawyer. Um, what the fuck is his name? Uh, well, one of the lawyers, uh, one of the lawyers that he included, uh, that's when they, they included the, the shirt and, said that he wanted the lawyer to uh, assist him. Hmm. Yeah, that's fucking... He fucking fucked with them so much, man. Yeah, definitely that. Like, he would have been, like, if it was in today's times, he would have been caught immediately. (laughs) With all all the shit that he... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. with how many phones we got flying around dude it's hard not to get caught on camera no i'm just talking managed. about just with the shit that he sent in they'd be like we got oh, your dna yeah. off of it immediately it's like <laughs> can't be showing up to court with seven different semen in your panties <laughs> Fuck. dave Chappelle. Oh. he was when he was talking, talking about, about uh the allegations kobe. that kobe Bryant raped that girl that apparently she had multiple semen. Um, there was multiple, multiple semen samples yeah, in her semen panties. Samples in her, like, yeah. That's fucking gross. When they were trying to prove he raped her, they found multiple peoples. So what? What are we? What are we gonna talk about? What's the next thing again? Uh, suspected killings. Um, well, we can get into those, or we can get into the actual murderers, like who's who's the suspects of. The we already crime. did that. We already did that. I went through the suspects. Oh, did you? Yeah, earlier on. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we did. We kind of did that backwards now, didn't we? 
Well, I described him and I said the possible people that could be him. And then we went into the killings. Well, uh, did we talk about the copycat? Do you guys know that they, uh, they compared the fingerprints between Ted Bundy and the Zodiac cases just to make sure that they, uh, they weren't by the same people. Yeah. And I guess uh, Ted Bundy was cleared as a person of interest. (laughs) (laughs) So there was a, um, Zodiac copycat named yep. uh, Heriberto Eddie Seda. He, uh, it was 20 years later in November of 1989. And um, yeah, he began his attacks in New York uh, City, taking a more literal and uh, a more literal approach than the actual Zodiac killer by murdering victims based on their Zodiac signs. But hmm. he was that, yeah. He, um... So he would really get to know them. Yeah. <laughs> that's, or, like, at least know when they're uh, born. He, uh... Okay, so... Uh, God damn, dude, I cannot fucking talk. What is this? So I guess he actually, um... He sent letters to the police and the media, too. Um, he began stalking his victims, shooting each with a home gun, a homemade gun at the oh, scene wow. of each, uh, at the scene of each crime. He left similar notes like that the Zodiac did, I guess. And then, uh, over the course of the next three years, he murdered like three New Yorkers and had attempted to kill five more. He was discovered through witnesses and because he left fingerprints on his notes, he, he uh, Yeah. He uh, engaged police in an unrelated shootout in 1996 and was arrested and convicted of the Zodiac copycat crimes. He was sentenced to 238 years in prison. See, I, I don't know why they even sentence people like that. It's like, oh, you got That's 200 life. fucking this years in life. prison. Dead. Just murder them. Because they, like, they want the you point? to see, damn, you got that many tallies on you. Yeah. Oh, look, it looks like you're serving 300 years in prison. Well, there's no point in keeping you alive. You're going to die in here. Let's fucking just get it over with. Go to the fucking slaughterhouse. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it should be, honestly. If you if you get that much time, it's a, it's pointless. They're going to die in prison. We're just going to support them the entire time. That's a this fucking, other. Uh, That's go ahead. crazy that he fucking. I don't know. That's just fucking crazy. I guess this, he apparently uh, spent his free time. Sorry, was, uh, he spent his free time okay. reading magazines about guns and violence, and like Soldier of Fortune books, or uh, Soldier of Fortune magazines and uh, books about serial killers. And he idolized hmm. the Zodiac killer, whom he viewed as a servant of God. When uh, fucking whack job, yeah. He became physically abusive. Towards is that his daughter is talking about? Oh, oh no, he became physically abusive of his half sister. Oh, mostly. Wow, that's not very nice. When he was sixteen, he dropped out of high school. When a firearm was found in his possession, I'm just skimming through facts of this guy. Oh, he had some. Yeah, he was definitely obsessed with them. He's got some of the same little symbol things and what looks like a pie chart above the thing. Yeah. Um, the yeah, this yeah. like circle with a cross on it. Yeah, and then like another circle that has it has here, I'll show you guys a picture of it. But it has like it's like a whole yeah. circle with three things. Is that like a normal zodiac thing? I don't remember. I, I no remember idea. that one. I remember on the left that cross. Is. Yeah, the one the on left, left one is the zodiac thing. It's the, yeah. the other one looked like he was trying to do his math homework afterwards. Yeah, like, like, fuck, I gotta make a pie chart real quick. <laughs> I gotta make a pie chart, but I'm not gonna finish and I'm gonna do the rest of my letter. What is this? I'm just gonna copy off the, the person with me in class. I'm just gonna copy off whoever sits next to me. <laughs> but yeah, this Joseph. guy seemed like he was just a fuck. Off. Yeah. Oh, peach cheers. mango cider. Cheers, brother. Oh, uh, I thought you were cheersing. Oh, sure. Pretty Damn. good. This uh this guy named Edward Edwards. Confirmed Motherfucker serial has killer. Two first names. Oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can I just uh, one last thing of this guy? Um, oh, I, I thought you were just, done with him. Go ahead. No, I was just trying to find the weapon thing when it said a homemade gun. I was just reading random things. Um, 
So he would shoot his victim. Uh, he would shoot seemingly targeted random people, would shoot them with homemade nine millimeter or uh, 22, uh, 22 zip guns. I don't know what that is. It's probably just uh, 22. Patricia Fonte was also stabbed over a hundred times when she fought back. Oh, wow. During his first shooting, he carried out blitz attacks. And then, like, later, he approached, he started approaching his victims under false, or he approached his victims in, under false pretense. Ooh. His goal was to kill 12 people, one person for each zodiac sign. So that's what he meant by the zodiac thing. Cause I was like, how do you do that? For this, Dude, is, the would, 22 zip gun looks so dope. It looks like a P90 almost, but smaller. Hmm. He would on, it's on like, that, it's like, yeah, like an Uzi size. Oh, okay. So he really did get, uh, what you guys were saying before he would on at least some occasions, look through the victim's personal belongings to find some form of ID in order to find out the out their dates of birth. So he was yeah. killing people by Zodiac sign, trying to, he had known victims in 1990. I thought I said in 89. Okay. You see Joseph? Or maybe that's when he started. That's not how it yeah. looks. That's not what it looks like. It, that folds out Casey. That oh, unfolds. Okay. Yeah. All the well, because all the pictures that well, like because I went on images and that's all it looked like too. Yeah, it folds out. So, I've seen those before. So in, so in that's, 19... that's all like this guy's holding it like that. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. So in uh, 1990, so 1990 he had one March 8th Mario Rosco 49. Round a, a Scorpio survived, shot in the back. March 29th, uh, Germain, German, Ger- something, Monte, Montenegro. Germain, 34. Montenegro. Yeah. 34, a Gemini survived shot through the liver. God, dude, these people are surviving. He's terrible at being a serial killer. I uh, mean, they're, May- homemade gu- they're homemade guns. Maybe they're not very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> May 31st, Joseph Pro, uh, Pro- Proce- uh, P-R-O-C-E. 78. Jesus Christ. P R O C E. Prosh. Prosh. Yeah. Uh, Taurus shot in the kidney. Died on June 24th. Well, uh, that uh, that's not counting on his kill count. That's 78. Uh, June 19th. <laughs> Larry Parham, 30, a cancer, survived, shot in the chest. Dude, that is three survives out of four. So August 10th, 1992. The one dude he Martin, did kill, he got him in the kidney and it was an old fuck. Yeah, so I mean, it's like he just died from infection. Yeah. He didn't even die from the shot. Yeah, he probably died from <laughs> fucking. Him. So August tenth, nineteen ninety two, Patricia Fonte, thirty nine, a Leo shot twice and stabbed a hundred plus times. That was the one I was talking about. So before. this is the copycat. Correct? Yeah, this is the copycat. Yeah, that's this nineteen ninety three June fourth, Jim Weber or Weber. It's W E B E R. Uh, forty two, a Libra like myself. Survived, shot in the buttocks. God damn, of course you would. <laughs> July 20th, Joseph. Dude, imagine, just like, you shot me in the ass. <laughs> July 20th, Joseph Diacone, Diacone, I don't know. Uh, 40. Diacone? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Weird last names. A Virgo shot in the neck. It doesn't say if that one died or not. October is- 2nd. Diane Ballard, 40, a Taurus, survived, shot in the neck. Uh, June 10th, 1994, an unidentified man injured. June 18th, 1996, the attack at his apartment. The attack at his apartment? At his own apartment he killed? Oh, yeah. Gladys, his sister, uh, injured, shot in the back. Wilbur Rios, 23, Gladys' boyfriend, briefly held hostage. So he held this motherfucker hostage, shot his sister in the back. Several unnamed police officers. This must have been when he got arrested. This is the shootout, yeah. Yeah, okay. So There's attempted a- attempted shot at them, but missed. So he went full-on stormtrooper towards the end there. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like yeah. he was just getting lucky beforehand, too. Yeah. What if That's the Zodiac like, was actually oh, this a girl, guy was a shitty but like copy wearing cat. like shortcut hair, like she just cut her hair short and stuff, and just had like a burly build to her? To well, they her said that he like, had a really like low a- voice. A low, like a low, a low, uh, oh, I didn't read anything about his voice, so I guess if he was talking, but I don't know. But, uh, what I was gonna say about Mr. Edward Edwards, he, uh, he was a 
serial killer that committed five murders between 1977 and 1960, uh, 1996, sorry. And, uh, this, uh, detective John A. Cameron, I guess he's the one who attributed him to some of the Zodiac murders, but I guess all of his theories were met with universal disdain from, <clears throat> especially from the law enforcement community. Like nobody, nobody believed. Why? shit that he was saying i don't know i don't know i didn't go into it i'm just reading i just read about these just now so i just thought there were a little interesting things before we get into honorable mentions of the killings and then uh honorable mentions should they be yeah. dishonorable mentions <laughs> well you know people who were attributed to it but not like confirmed you know and then there was ted kanaski is that how you say his name kanaski he was a uh, a domestic terrorist and mathematician, also known as the Unabomber. Oh, he he was investigated wait, wait, for possible wait, 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 connections. Wait, say, the, say the name again. Did you say what? Ted uh, Kanaski. Oh, Krasinski. Krasinski. No, what, what, the Unabomber. The human Unabomber was Krasinski. No, it's you're thinking K-A-C- of John Krasinski. Yeah, but, wait, wait, I thought you said the Unabomber. Didn't you say it Unabomber? is? Yeah, Unabomber yeah. is Krasinski. Well, then that's my. I, I know it was. I know it was. An, it was a. It's a K A C Z Y N S K I. It's Krasinski. There's no R in it. There's no R. Wait, it's not Krasinski. Oh, it, I thought Krasinski. Unabomber was Krasinski. So did I say Krasinski. right? Krasinski. Krasinski. Oh, you're Krasinski. right. But I thought Krasinski, Krasinski is the actor from The Office. Oh, oh, you're right. <laughs> Damn. So I guess he was investigated uh, for connections to the uh, Zodiac killer in 1996 because I guess he worked out in Northern California at the time of the Zodiac murders. But I guess that, uh, well, and they, they, he was a suspect because he had an interesting cryptography and threatened the press into publishing his communications as well. But I guess the FBI and the San Francisco Police Department, based on fingerprints and handwriting, Comparison, sorry. Um, he was uh, dismissed from being yeah. a suspect. So I, I'm just. But that was crazy. I didn't know. I didn't know they even they even went into heard, the Unabomber ship. I had heard about that at one. Point. I don't know why. I don't know why I kept thinking of the actor Krasinski. <laughs> I was thinking when you said oh, Krasinski, man. it reminded me yeah, of Archer. Was, no, yeah, <laughs> no, and I was fucking. I don't know why my fucking brain with I the mole. Two characters together. Two characters. That was, I think that was the mole's name in the in the first episode was Krasinski, and what? then Archer's like Krasinski, German, possibly Jew. I don't know. We're still doing, we're still we're still trying to figure it out. But uh, the next one for another suspect that they uh, that they questioned was the the Manson family. After the capture of Charles Manson and his murderous cult. A 1970 report by the California Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation stated that all male members of the Manson family have been investigated and eliminated as Zodiac suspects. Yeah, but I just thought it was crazy. Family, that, that was like, have we done MK Ultra yet? No, but we are this, uh, this, this season. Yeah. season. Yeah. That's like, they weren't serial killers. They were, you know. You know. So these next few, these are uh, these are people that were attributed uh, that are attributed to the Zodiac killings, but not confirmed. Sus- suspected, su- 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 ah, suspected victims. Yeah. So this one is a uh, Ray Davis. Uh, this happened in Oceanside, California, on April Ocean- 9th, I- 1962. and I believe Oceanside is down by like San Diego area, Southern California, I believe. Uh- and I'm not hundred percent sure. I know I did some work out there, but I can't remember where exactly it was. But I know I, it was by the beach. Did, did, obviously, cool, cool related this, thing. Did someone show. survive a zodiac encounter, encounter because like they jumped out of a moving car after the zodiac had made them throw their baby out the mo- window of the moving car? Oh shit! I don't know about that. Yeah, that's fucking wild. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you look uh, you look that up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Mr. Ray Davis real quick. So on April 9th, 1962, the day before this murder, the police, uh, someone called the police department and told them, I'm going to pull something here in Oceanside and you'll never be able to figure it out. And a few days later, someone called and told the police about the details of the murder. 
and said that he uh, the murder of Ray Davis and said that he would kill a bus driver next. And that is where the um the hip new uh, lingo bussin comes from. Oh, you you guys hear that shit too? Kids say that all the time. Oh, that's bussin. Like, what the fuck are you just it sounds, <laughs> it sounds it's hit and miss. Like you hear people say it. Sometimes it sounds like normal, and then like a lot of people, it sounds super corny and cringy. It's like, okay. what about what about when the kids say so, you want to get sturdy? What? I much idea. rather hear someone say that than someone go. It's when they're going to be doing some like dance move when they drop pancakes? down to the ground and they're like, oh, let's okay. see, get sturdy. So, have you guys so, had these pancakes? They're buzzing. At, yeah. At, like in March, on time. March 22nd, 1970, at approximately 11.15 p.m. on Highway 132 near Patterson, California, Kathleen Johns, age 32, and her infant daughter were on their way to visit... <coughs> To visit a to visit a relative in Petaluma, California, a man a man Johns later identified as Zodiac disabled her car as it was parked along the highway, then kidnapped her and her daughter. There there were no witnesses. Johns' car was later found burned about burned about two miles from where she claimed to have left it. Here's some of the details. Johns had pulled over because a man in another car had gestured that one of her wheels was wobbling. The man also pulled over and offered to fix fix the problem instead he he seemingly made it worse when john's pulled back out into the highway the wheel came off once again he offered to help the man once again offered to help the man convinced her to accept a ride to a service station however according to john's the man drove her and her baby around a desolate back roads near the town of tracy for almost two hours threatening to kill them the man was approximately 30 years old 5'9 160 pounds had short dark hair and was wearing heavy rimmed glasses and dark clothing. Clutching her daughter, Johns was finally able to escape and found a ride to a nearby town. Once at the police station, Johns spotted the Zodiac wanted post and frantically identified him as being responsible for the abduction. Over the next few days, San Francisco major newspaper The Chronicle and The Examiner ran stories on the incident. On July 24, 1970, Zodiac mailed a letter to The Chronicle, apparently taking credit for the crime. I just want to say uh, what, so when he apparently said, oh, I oh yes I you, did Kathleen Johns she said yeah right? in the movie oh, yeah. like I in didn't, the movie and stuff I it wrote, says like the dude to told her to throw the baby out the window and then she like held the bu- baby and jumped out of the car yeah because they're not you, gonna fucking mark a baby on the, MTV that's it not uh, not TV but a movie that's not good that's not good fucking filmography you know in the public's eyes I mean it'd be it'd make for I mean, a great it's story. a serial killer movie. If well, happened. yeah, I know it'd make for a great story, but you don't see that shit. That's why, like, only in like the Human Centipede two, you see that baby get squished after she accelerates on the yeah. gas. Yeah. So we got the Ray Davis one, and so next is a uh, Bill Baker. This happened in Santa Barbara on June fourth, nineteen sixty three. Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards were shot on a beach near Lom Lompoc Lompoc L O M P O C. Lompoc and yeah, Lompoc and uh, police believe that the assailant, a salient assailant, attempted to bind the victims. But when they freed themselves and attempted to flee, the killer shot them repeatedly in the back and chest with a twenty-two caliber weapon. The killer then placed their bodies on a uh, inside a small shack and then tried, but unsuccessfully, to burn the structure to the ground. That sounds kind of like the dude's mo. Besides, like the I don't understand, like why he would the he, thing. he like yeah because he was always like oh because I feel like he was like oh let's make a scene let me let me sh- let me put this stuff on display you know like this what, is how what, my art was this and the this was happened in 1963. Okay, so this is before. Yeah, before but I feel like confirmed ones. Like I mean, this could have been him, but I just don't understand. Well, I mean, I guess if because he wanted to put it on display, maybe he wanted to put the bodies in there this, so like it make a make a scene. Maybe. Well, this is know. this is before he had started before everything, so this could be you know he was afraid of getting caught. This might have been like one of his first. Yeah, like oh, I got to get fucking get get rid of the evidence. Got to burn it. Got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so I don't know. But uh, the next the, one is go ahead. because that came first, not after the Lake Berryessa one. I'd say that one is probably him. 
Yeah, the uh, the first one that we talked about too was in 1962, so that also was before this one and before you know the yeah. prior event. The next one that we're going to talk about is uh, Sherry Jo Bates in Riverside, California, on October 30th, 1966. Um, I didn't really read about this one. I just know that uh, they received the police department received tips that uh, the Zodiac killings and the circumstances surrounding uh, Sherry Bates's death were similar. Um, I can go to her death. She was, yeah, uh, this, this was in SoCal too. Yes. Uh, just, this is like right outside of LA, like Riverside, yeah. California, uh, not California, but I, well, it ain't California, but Riverside, I was going to say Corona area, like mm-hmm. that area. I know where Riverside's at. I was just like, just, just to like, it's, it's a ways away. Like the, the one that was on the beach, was that also in Southern California? The um, let me. The one that was in '63. Yeah, I forgot the name of the beach because I can just look at the lake one, the Lake Herman one. Oh no, that was the that was the road. Uh, there was Lompoc, right? Lompoc one. No, the one. The one talking about the honorable mention ones. Oh yeah, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Okay, so it was Lompoc, right? That was in uh, that was in Santa Barbara and uh, on a beach near Lompoc, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how far Santa Barbara is from, like, map wise from Riverside. I don't think it's too far. I think it's only like a couple hour drive. So Sherry was found dead the next uh, at ten thirty. Well, neighbors heard screaming around ten thirty p.m. the prior night, and then she was found dead the next morning, a short distance from the library between the two abandoned uh, bandit houses, and uh, that were ready. For, like they were getting ready for demolitions on the campus for renovations and then uh the wires to her Volkswagen was distributor cap has been pulled out and she was brutally beaten stabbed to death a man's Timex watch was torn uh with the torn wristband was found nearby the watch stopped at 1224 but the police believe that the attack happened much earlier so he pulled the distributor out, oh, so it won't start. Yeah, the then, wires out. Yeah, so when she when she went to check it, he then what beat her to death. Yeah, I think he. I think it said she. Uh, he stabbed her to death. Oh, okay. Let me see. Yeah, she sorry, was I was, I was, I was beaten and stabbed uh, to death. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that one. Uh. That sounds kind of like a Ted Bundy move, to be honest. When was that one? That one was in 1966. Hmm. On October 30th. I don't know when Ted Bundy was active exactly, like what years and like the 80s and shit. Se- yeah. 70s, uh, okay, 80s. So. Late 70s, but 80s. I believe. Yeah. All of uh, Ted Bundy's killings, though, were all of his, like, yeah. are all of his accounted for, or does he have some, like, there's some out with there's, there a, there's some suspected ones where he said like he did some in like California and stuff and then he said he did ones that he won't tell him about because the victims were too young so he killed uh, kids yeah yeah so I mean um, and the, yeah he, Ted Bundy like he he confessed to shit, a, like a good amount of them I mean you already caught might as well fucking spill the beans I mean there's no point of a uh... I, it took no him a long time to on. confess. He did. He did it when there was pretty much he knew he was going to die. No way. Before that, every single time he because he helped the FBI work on cases. Every single time he says, "Well, if I was a killer, this is what I would do." That's how he always phrased it up until the very, very last moment. If I was a murderer, like a serial killer, like um, in my thought process, after I get like if I got caught and there was no chance of me getting out, and they're like, "Oh, let, tell us about all the people you killed." I'd be like, well, sit down. Let me tell you a tale. And yeah, that's how Ed Kemper was. Him. Ed Kemper was very corroborative with the police. Like, because uh, I don't feel like and, after and that a point, big reason there's we no have point the, of running away yeah, from it. A big reason we have the understanding on serial killer psychology is because of uh, Ed Kemper and, and you know, fucking Bundy and stuff with the interviews we got from them. Mostly being the, Ed Kemper. Who was the guy that uh, he just... They just made the Netflix show about, and he got all popular. Mindhunter? No, 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 no. Uh, serial killer. Oh, fucking 
Yeah, that's uh, fuck I can't it. think of his name right now. Milwaukee Cannibal. It's it's yeah, it's Dahmer. Dahmer, yeah, yeah. So, like, <clears throat> I forgot what I was gonna say about it. Oh yeah, he was he was very forthcoming about his murders and shit too. Like he was, yeah, he was very he, clear. So I just, wonder if that went into into the like their studies as well. So this next one was uh, Kathleen Johns. This happened just west of Modesto on March 22nd, 1970 on Highway 132 near I-580. Uh, that was the one where, where they were abducted by the guy hmm. and uh, with the infant. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, she was being drove around for approximately one and a half hours. Yeah. And then the last one was Donna Lass. On March 22nd, 1971, a postcard to the Chronicle addressed to uh, Paul Averly and believed to be from the Zodiac appeared to claim responsibility for the disappearance, uh, disappearance of Donna Lass on September 6, 1970, made from a collage of advertisements and magazine letterings. It featured a scene from an advertisement for uh, Forest Pine condominiums and the text Sierra Club sought victim 12, peeked through the pines, past Lake Tahoe areas, and around uh, in the snow. The Zodiac uh, circle cross symbol was in uh, was in both the place of the usual, like where the return address would be in the lower right section on the front face of the postcard. Huh. She was never found. Of, yeah, there's not a lot of information on that one. Well, I'd say, what, what do you think about the Zodiac just in general? Do you have any, for for all of you, do you guys have like any fucking theories on, on what suspect you think it was or just, I don't, just anything. I don't know any suspect in general that I would say is the Zodiac killer of the suspects that we've even talked about or like, like that I read about because even if it was one of those people, we would never know until either after they're dead or unless they submit to some sort of yeah, the one you know, who, uh, forensic who like confessed testing. and was also like went to school with the first victims worked with the second victim it's like you knew them personally that one that one for me it was like okay shit this this guy has there is some shit that would be like yeah this seems right this seems like he is or the fucking uh lee guy the one that was the elementary school teacher and then went to jail for child molestation yeah those two are the ones that I'm just like, I think it could be either one of those. I kind of lean heavier towards the one who knew the vic a couple of the victims personally, because if it was his first time killing, it probably would be someone he knew. You know? Yeah. At least someone like he maybe knew a schedule, like kind of knew where they would be and stuff. Yeah. Plus I believe, I believe that's the guy who fucking said that he was the Zodiac on his deathbed. And it's like, huh? That and you live near them, but that could just be I don't fucking know. We may never know, which would kind of suck. I kind of want it to be solved someday. I'd be like, oh, so this is who it is. And then they could piece together the fucking timelines and everything. Be like, oh, he was in this area during these years, so he might have killed these people. You know? It's always gonna be down to speculation though, unless they get well, some, I mean, like smoking. That's what gun. that's what happened with the that's what happened with the Golden State killer. I mean, they got him while he was alive, but they're like, Oh shit, we got him on this stuff and then uh they looked at just his 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 past like what where he was when and was like, Oh shit, he could have killed these people and then it was found out, oh yeah, he did. Something crazy yeah. about the Golden State killer, you know who like was a big part in catching that motherfucker? Patton Oswald's wife was really uh she wrote books and she was really big on uh the golden state killer shit like a lot of her stuff is published and shit like it's pretty interesting how how, like, how much state... she helped with that 
with the Golden State Killer, did the guy who got caught did was he ever investigated originally? Or was I believe he just so. like some I, I believe so, yeah. Uh, and the reason I bring up the that. Golden State Killer during Zodiac is because a lot of their killings got mixed up because they were active around the same time. But the thing with the Golden State Killer that was different, he, was, he, was a, he started that. out as a, he started out as a burglar, so he broke into people's house and, houses and killed them. Nineteen seventy four to eighty six, yeah. murdered thirteen people, raped fifty one, burglarized one hundred and twenty. Yeah, it was a piece of shit. Joseph James D'Angelo. But yeah, Joe, what do you think about the Zodiac? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's like kind of crazy. I mean, it it's known as one of like the most. Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> it's one of the most much. most famous it's unsolved most, murders yeah, ever. Most famous unsolved murders ever, but also, I mean, who's? who's it's like it's like Zodiac, time. Zodiac, and Jack the Ripper. Those are those are the big the big ones when it comes well, to all un, unsolved yeah. serial killer stuff. Yeah, but um, I mean, I guess what we should have done is like cross reference other fucking big killings that were going on in the area, too, because you never know, like everything I came across, I kind of seen like confirmed yet unconfirmed those kills. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the thing, did... though, is like at this time, though, like during the from the 50s through up until like the 80s, like that 30 years, there was a lot of active serial killers. Like there was a, sh- yeah, the- it's not. And yeah. So it's, it's just- like, there was overlaps and stuff. Like, that's why, like, I mean, they fucking tested Bundy's stuff for Zodiac shit, you know, <laughs> but it's. Yeah. That, and so who's to tell if it actually was, or somebody that knew information or like I said, if there was a Zodiac, <laughs> a Zodiac fucking, um, now I can't remember what I said before. Hmm. Um, uh, there bad. was a, whole, a zodiac. There was a zodiac network. It was a group of yeah. serial killers killing multiple people, and only a few letters got out because it was the only few that somebody could actually fucking the one person that could actually uh, decode shit. Yeah, or like that would be interesting. A a, net, a network of of killers, like a cult or something. Uh, judging yeah, by like cool. what he said about the afterlife, that kind of religious connotation to it, it yeah, could, it could be have a been a cult, cult. thing. Yeah. Zodiac could be a whole fucking coat, uh, coat, a cult. Um, I, I was reading a thing too that said it's like, oh, some of the fucking coding things came from the Zodiac. Zodiac. The, the, alphabet. the only thing that I dispute on that one is on multiple occasions when there were survivors, um, they described him exactly the same. Yeah, but also all white people looked the same. <laughs> yeah that's true um uh yeah no honestly that, that's just like a cool like if, if you're trying to unwind in some kind of cool conspiracy story it'd be a whole network thing honestly uh, yeah. it was probably a guy that was like hey these are secluded areas we're in the fucking late 1960s i'm just firing on people at will at this point like it, it's like yeah. oh cool there's this couple Hey, here's Magoo and fucking whatever. Michelle. Let me let me pull out my flashlight. They get out because they grabbed out their fucking um their identification card like shit. They were getting ready to whatever. They thought it was a police officer. They didn't fucking know. He came and shined the light on them and just started firing on them. That's just like a random fucking thing. Shine yeah. the light in their eyes. Boom, 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 boom. Walked away, probably reloaded, came back, shot again. Like it's just somebody that was just like, hey. It's like you said, like an opportunity. Forget about murder. It. That's what he was just yeah. like. Hey, these people are out here. I know the secluded spots where kids yeah. go to make out or young adults, because I think, I think they were like 22 and 19, weren't they? I thought they were a little older. The first victims were 16 and 17. Yeah. I, I but uh, the second ones, I thought they were like 22, 19. Or I think, something. I think like 17, 18. Oh, were like they? That. Wow. I think so. Well, I mean, he was just hitting fucking makeout spots. Yeah, so it's not like he was. Yeah. So I, I know, think it's he interesting. Was just going and, and, where he could and, and not get caught easily because secluded areas. Yeah. Until it's officially solved, it is never. We're never gonna know. I don't think it'll ever be what, solved. Honestly. Yeah, it's it's been so long, but you never know until it's like officially solved. If it ever does get solved, we'll never really know. 
um, the motivations behind the killings. Because the first ones could have been personal or they, you know, it's, it's, you, you never know. Some of them could have been personal or it could have been uh, crimes of opportunity. You know, you just don't, don't know because we don't know who did it. We can't, we can't, you know, even come up with theories based on their mental state because we don't know who it is. We don't know what people they knew. We don't know their background. Well, anyways, I think we've fleshed this out pretty good. Do you guys have any final statements or comments or questions? Um, no, I think, uh, I think it's pretty solid. I mean, there's so much about the Zodiac Killer. Like, I know we didn't cover everything, and there's, like, whole podcasts about it, so. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for listening. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes, please comment, like, subscribe, all that bullshit. Um, I've been a host tonight, Mike. Casey? I'm Joe. And I am Matt. Guys, this is kind of embarrassing. I have just learned from my co-hosts that my output resembles a female Stephen Hawking voice. When I first calibrated the speech module, it was supposed to sound cool, affectionate, yet manly. Kind of like an amalgamation of John Stamos, John Wayne, and Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> oh, well, at least it's not the voice of a preteen micro dick like my brother's. Why don't you fuck off? No fuck you, you fat phallus feeling foreskin flicking fishy fingering fuckwad. Thank you for tuning in to the Conspiracy Outpost. <laughs>